Hey, 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 YouTube world, we are back once again. I hope you are having a fantabulous day so far. I wanted to follow up on a conversation that we had on the podcast this morning, which all the links for the podcast are available below. Um, the Dolphins may be soon in a position where they're about to make the worst mistake of their lives. And this is an organization that passed on Drew Brees to sign Dante Culpepper. Uh, they are legitimately about to make the worst decision of their careers by passing on Tua Tugvailoa, potentially moving up to number three to draft a tackle, which when I heard that, I thought this, no one moves up to three to draft a tackle unless they're 100% convinced the Giants are about to do that. So that one feels like a definitive smokescreen. Um, Ian Rappaport's talking about how an infinite amount of offensive tackles like a record setting amount of offensive tackles may go in the top 10 picks which sounds absurd given the circumstance that we're seeing before uh, Miami could have an option at one of those quarterbacks down there at pick 18 which seemed totally not plausible uh, a week or so ago or a day ago even possibly that they could get either Jordan Love George, Justin Herbert or Tua Tagovailoa there at pick number 18 given that Miami was in the prime position to draft to a tug of Iloa. They had been connected at the hip, pun intended, for the last year plus. And now it comes down to basically the wedding day, and they're getting close to leaving Tua there at the altar. And it seems insane to think that a team that has worked this hard might go ahead and pass on the opportunity. And the thing that's craziest about it is that the Chargers may not even be a competition anymore. It looks like the Chargers are totally going to pass on a quarterback, which seemed absurd just even a week ago, but now it seems like a formality. The Chargers are going to pass totally on a quarterback and go offensive lineman uh, because Anthony Lynn is in a position where he wants to go win with Tyrod Taylor, which I'm convinced they will be able to do, which is why, especially over the last few days, I felt like we've been talking about them with a quarterback, but ultimately... I don't think that they're in a position where they really need a quarterback. Like quarterback is not their most definitive need. Uh, offensive line is a big need for them. Uh, wide receiver is definitely an interesting need for the Chargers. Quarterback, not so much, given that Tyrod Taylor is very much a serviceable quarterback who will win next year with the Los Angeles Chargers. So there's no pressure for Miami anymore. Like you, you can get him at number five, as long as you don't mess it up. That's the only circumstance. Don't mess it up, Miami. You've got this prime position to get the quarterback you've been looking for for a long time. And if it hasn't been a secret, it doesn't need to be a secret. They want to a tug of Iloa. Brian Flores wasn't willing to tank to get him, but the front office was. And the front office is now throwing out all these signals all over the place. Is it offensive tackle? Is it quarterback? Do they trade up? Do they trade down? Are they going to wait till 18 to get a quarterback? Are they going to try and jump the Chargers to if the Chargers want to make a move? It doesn't make any sense from anyone's perspective to make these moves time and time again. As long as they're smoke screens, I'm okay with it. But this is really concerning. The fact that it's so many smoke screens, sometimes where there's smoke, there is actually fire. I believe it with the Chargers and the whole Justin Herbert situation. But for Miami, I refuse to believe that after all this time, they're just now going to totally pass on Tua Tug of Iloa. It's insanity. It's why the NFL draft is awesome, to be honest. It's why the Lions hold a lot of power, but they want to try and exert this power. It's why the NFL draft's going to be crazy because everything's on Zoom anyways, so we know less this year than we ever have before, which is why I'm ready for an absolutely insane draft. The only thing that I know for certain at this point is that Joe Burrow is going to be the number one pick and Chase Young is going to be the number two pick. And God forbid that the Miami Dolphins pull some kind of BS and go Justin Herbert with pick number five or do the weirdest thing and trade up and get an offensive lineman. I mean, I, I'm convinced that one had to have been Greer sending something out to, you know, Rappaport or two sources within Miami leaking some information to Rappaport. Whatever it may be, there's no way Miami could be that absurdly dumb.
and maybe that they know who their their leakers are and they're just testing to see what gets out and what doesn't and if they trade up to number three it makes no sense if you're going to get a lineman given that at pick five you can still get Werfs or Wills and I'm still convinced the Giants want Isaiah Simmons so why would you even play with this if it's a legitimate possibility going on I understand evaluating all your options but man this is your wedding day. This is a coordination for you and Tua to be adjoined at the hip, again pun intended, to be adjoined at the hip for the next 15 years and turn around a franchise that hasn't had much hope really since Dan Marino retired, as crazy as that seems. Don't make the wrong mistake, Miami. Draft Tua with that pick and just don't do the thing that's going to lead to an organizational heartache for the next 20 years. Because this time, it may not be forgivable. Because you would be walking away at the altar. And that, this is a healthy marriage is the other important part. Walking away from the altar from that is why dumb organizations lose and why smart organizations succeed. And this one would be infuriating and I'm not even a Miami Dolphins fan.